Hello, my friends. Can you hear me? Really? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. You don't have to shout loud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just because uh, the, the sound of the video was not... Yes, good. yes, yes. Since I didn't, know, didn't hear the sound of the video, so I, I thought it's my, it's my computer. Emilio, come stai? Hey. I missed you for, for a long entire week. Yeah, me too, very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who can be, who can be uh, uh, good these days with what we are experiencing? Yeah, yeah. yeah they, uh, we, we, we didn't have any idea so not last Sunday about it, uh, of course, a little bit, but uh, today we are all a little bit more sad than uh, seven days ago. Absolutely. Yeah. And maybe we can just say that the minimum we can do is to devote this episode and to send our uh, warmest wishes to our colleagues and to all the people. Yes. Experiencing this tragedy in, in Ukraine. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know how likely it is, but let's hope that next Sunday, uh, let's make a wish that next Sunday, the next episode, uh, the situation will be, uh, will be different. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, anyway, we we should start, Emilio, because we have many many things to do today. Huh? We we also have a, a very nice uh, a very nice um, uh, let's say brand new surprise for our uh, friends uh, call, um, uh, joining us in uh, in uh, in Zoom, but also uh, following us on YouTube. So we will speak about it. Give me a second. I, I, I didn't like the, the fact that we started without listening the, the, the sound. So uh, let me just uh, try to uh, yeah, yeah. the sound, right. but, but you have to allow me to share my, my screen first. Sure. Uh, maybe, maybe Emanuele, can, can, can you allow us to share our screens? Yeah, because this, this yeah. magic is necessary. I mean, otherwise yeah. I cannot get in the mood. <laughs> you, you don't get into the mood, right? <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Bah, bah, bah. No. Uh, <laughs> let's say, let's say a little bit. I can, I can have a little bit the feeling, but not very much the, the sound. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, so we have many things to do. We have a, be, a great guest to, uh, to, uh, to welcome in a in a couple of minutes. Uh, just I, I I just want to share with you uh, a little a little. Um, uh, let me see which one because I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to. Yes. Okay. This one here. Eh? So let me let me show you uh, 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 just a. Um, a little um, introduction uh, about the surprise, you know. So we have a, a, a nice, um, uh, let's say, um, gift uh, for uh, the winner of the couch session. And uh, uh, this is uh, something special. I don't want to get into the, the, the topics uh, for the moment, but we are very happy, Emilio and myself, uh, to launch finally this uh, this course, which is online, but we, we will speak we will speak later about it. Uh, so just stay stay there until the, the end. Important thing, the important thing to say for the moment is that finally the winner of the Kahoot uh, competition will win a real prize because real prize they yeah. are just winning. Uh, you know our uh, <laughs> our congratulations. Exactly. The opportunity. Yeah. To, to appear on the stage and say hello. Ex exactly. It's not only it's not only uh, the the pleasure, but also something physical, something uh, something uh, material, <laughs> material, <laughs> material. <laughs> so, uh, Emilio, should we start with the question of the week? Absolutely. Let's go with the Emanuele, question. Emanuele, can you, uh, you know, Emanuele is uh, our, uh, uh, let's say, old new friend who is helping us uh, because uh, Sebi today was busy. Uh, you know that he is an actor in theater. So he's studying, he's studying uh, theater uh, acting. And he's he's multi-talented because he's a dramatologist, he's an actor and he's also a producer of a show. Yes. 
Well, we, we must be multitasking in some way. So question of the week, do you feel confident with facial lesions? Uh, and the uh, possibilities are yes, no, sometimes. I like it very much because in this question, my answer has very high chances to win. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I think so, I think so. But it's very, uh, it's very, uh, very happy because uh, facial lesions is something that it's been two, three months that we say that we need to discuss about it, and so the time it's arrived. Done. And also, who uh, who could be a better guest? No way, no way. Than the one we have today, come on. Yes, he's the inventor. He's the inventor of uh, demoscopy for facial melanoma. So, Emanuele, show us the results. Uh, let's see how confident our, our 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 friends are concerning facial facial lesions. Yeah, sometimes sixty four. <laughs> we all vote for sometimes, right? Okay, so, uh, but this is a good introduction for our guest, right, Emilio? Uh, I leave you the pleasure to introduce him. Oh, that's a, not only a, ple a pleasure, but also a big honor. Uh, our uh, tonight's guest is the very well-known Willy Stoltz, which is considered one of the, of the godfathers of the Moscow for many, many reasons. Uh, one of the first people that uh, investigated criteria and published the first rules, the first the first uh, methods on how we can interpret criteria, the ABCD rule, but many other things. Among them, uh, uh, the one that we are going to discuss today, so the uh, the pattern of lentigo maligna melanoma. So let's welcome Willy on stage. Emanuele, Emanuele, uh, can you uh, puoi introdurre uh, Billy? Ah, perfetto, perfetto. Here we go. Executive board of the International Demoscopy Society for many. Today he on stage. <laughs> yeah. Really, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. So yeah, thank you very much for this very kind introduction. So I feel very honored. Uh, to be part of, uh, of this evening session. Uh, I, I saw uh, today one of uh, the sessions on YouTube, I remember. It's really great. A great, show, a great show, and I would, I'm very happy that I can contribute today yeah. something. So. No, guys, you, you, you see the face of Billy. I mean, he is like a kind of, uh, let's say, one of these uh, eternal guys, you know, these uh, superheroes, you know, because he is the only one, maybe uh, together with Peter Sawyer only, who, is, let's say, who was, uh, let's say, here from the beginning, you know, first consensus meeting, Hamburg, 1990, eh? together with Willy and other people who are not showing up to the uh, arena. And then, and then until now, uh, is uh, let's say really contributing a lot. But let me tell you also something more. Um, uh, uh, it's due to really uh, that I got the first invitation at uh, 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 an ARDB Congress. Uh, I suppose this was in, in, in Amsterdam, something like uh, 1999 or 2000, something like that. And, um, and I was shaking like this, you know. I was a, a little guy. And... <laughs> no, no, but I remember very well. Uh, we met for the first time in Slovenia yes. in a, in a, in this congress, and Peter Sawyer brought us together, and he he gave us the task to yeah to rethink some demoscopy criteria. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, at which. So at the first moment, I was really, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 very much uh, impressed by the energy. <laughs> and it's really beautiful. So you, you and Emilio uh, and all the others, so you made so many publications. So I really. I, well, I really uh, speaking of talking about publications, I would really like to share 
one of yours. Eh? Uh, but before talking about publication, I want to show, uh, I want to uh, share with you one case. Eh? And I have a question for you, for all of the audience connected. So this is the clinical on the left, top left, and this is thermoscopy. Uh, bottom right. So, uh, of course, it's a facial lesion. Now you have to tell me if you like to perform a biopsy or a follow-up. Emanuele, perfetto, Emanuele, grazie. So, biopsy for you based on what you see or follow-up? Let's see what, what's going on here. And then I will tell you why I was choosing this case. No, but why don't you give additional options like, uh, you know, Scratching cryotherapy. Scratching cryotherapy, yeah. No, let's say, yeah, very simple, you know, binary possibility. Okay, let's have a look how things are going. Okay, biopsy, can you imagine? Biopsy for 93% of the people. So, uh, the great, great, great majority. Huh? So, but it's a matter of the fact, it's a matter of fact, it's a case. It's a case that I saw with my father who was in in 1997. Huh? Before, we understood something about facial melanoma. We had no idea about facial melanoma in dermoscopy. So, we didn't know what to look for. I uh, so we didn't decide to make a biopsy. We yeah, decided we to make it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Of yeah. course, that's the lesion one year yeah. later. Uh, yeah. Of course, this was a, a mistake, but a mistake because of the ignorance at yeah. that time of yeah. the criteria of early melanoma of the face. So and now it comes, you know, this publication is. Of course. Uh, was published in the JAD in 2000 by the group of Billy, and, uh, and this was radically changing, radically yeah. our just way of doing concerning facial melanoma. Uh, he was already uh, realizing that there are basically four uh, major criteria for uh, uh, for facial melanoma, which is asymmetric pigmented follicular openings, dark rhomboidal structures, uh, slate gray. Slate yeah, gray dots, yeah, which uh, basically yeah, uh, afterwards yeah. we simplified the concept of annular yeah. granular okay. structures, okay. right? Where yeah. we, yeah. we yeah. a little bit this was a, a simplification later have, on, many, and with this to do today, uh, basic uh, criteria, we, uh, we uh, you can achieve a very uh, nice sensitivity uh, of 89% nice, uh, and the specificity of 96 of new surprise for our friends. Probably the only in uh, uh, the only in problem, front, but also uh, for is this, this method was used with uh, more easy cases of melanoma because based on what we are looking today uh, 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 at the melanomas we see today, probably these criteria are not able to, uh, let's say, to reach uh, 90%, 95% specificity. Anyway, what is also very important is that at that time, uh, really gave us the possibility to understand the progression uh, of lentigo maligna. Eh? So he was uh, in some way through dermoscopy uh, uh, able to understand a little bit the progression model of, uh, of lentigo maligna. These are the original uh, pictures published in the paper. As you can can see here top right you can see these asymmetric pigmented follicular openings gray color gray circles afterwards they were also called gray circles and here you see this kind of an, an initial uh, rhomboidal structure and what we today call annular granular structures at the time he called these structures like uh, the gray globules gray dots uh, and then other uh, another couple of examples here why it's not going, okay. Uh, rhomboidal structures, uh, top right, and this kind of, uh, uh, again, rhomboidal structures uh, in a more advanced uh, uh, lentigo maligna uh, on the face. So here is the problem. You see that now that I know the criteria, I know perfectly that this, this lesion is showing perfectly all the criteria that really was, was publishing three years later, we saw this, this patient. You know, so the annular granular structures, the rhomboidal structures, the uh, gray circles, and so on.
Okay, and this is a progression model that was published to, together with uh, with this study. You see, so uh, lentigo maligna is a melanoma which is starting basically. The pathology is going on around the follicle, eh? and that's why the very initial criterion, the the most in, uh, 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 er, the earliest criterion, is this asymmetric pigmented follicular openings, and then afterwards annular granular structures and rhomboidal structures are coming, and then afterwards homogeneous areas are, are, are coming, and then finally with fully uh, developed lentigo malignas and also with uh, invasion starting in a, in a, in a lentigo maligna, these homogeneous areas, uh, homogeneous areas are obliterating the, the air follicles. Uh, so after 20 years, is still... Before you go to the, to the after 20 years, I would like to make a comment here, which is not... Sure. I'm, I'm doing this comment is that I consider this particular paper probably the most impactful paper in the dermoscopy literature ever uh, because not only because it described something that was brand new everything is brand new at the beginning but because so many years later and with so many new research efforts by all of us the findings of this paper were only confirmed. And um, after 20 years, this paper is valid to the last point. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not replaced by, by new knowledge. It's only additional knowledge, which is based on, on, on this preliminary paper. And I cannot think of any other paper uh, with this power throughout the years. So it's uh, uh, true. Definitely true, definitely true. And all these uh, criteria are still valid. All what we know since 20 years is still what we use today. The, uh, the only change, which is by the way, a big change is the fact that also because of the, uh, of the new developments, also because this paper, uh, our knowledge in the field of facial melanoma improved a lot in these last 20 years. And what we realized, we realized a very important concept. And the concept is that at the very beginning, at the very beginning, facial melanoma is not recognizable at all, okay? So, of course, also at the very beginning, uh, superficial spreading melanoma is not easy to recognize, but let's say after three, four millimeter of diameter, a lesion, a melanoma located on the trunk usually develops enough criteria, specific melanoma specific criteria to be identified. On the face, you have to wait a little bit more. Uh, maybe because there are less cells involved in the proliferation. I don't know what is the problem from an histopathologic point of view, but it's a matter of fact that when I tell you that this is an early facial melanoma in situ, this is a dramatic statement, you know, because this is really looking like a solar lentigo, you know? So we had to uh, change a little bit the, the way of doing, you know? Okay. Uh, the three, four criteria for facial melanoma are still valid and still the only ones we have to look for, but not at the very beginning. At the very beginning, there is nothing. So how to save our, uh, uh, our life and our patient's life? Uh, doing the opposite. Instead of searching for melanoma-specific criteria, let's search for benign criteria. If we find benign criteria, then it's okay. If we don't find benign criteria, we have to stop and think a little bit. It could be a lentigo maligna, okay? And here, I don't see clear-cut convincing benign features. What I see here, I, don't, I cannot see scales, I cannot see white follicles, I cannot see erythema, I cannot see reticular lines, fingerprints, I, can, I cannot see sharp demarcation or classic seborrheic keratosis criteria. So this is the, the only reason why we biopsied the previous lesion. Okay, and this is the way we are doing. Okay, so the first question I ask myself when I see today a uh, flat lesion on the face is do I see clear cut benign features? And for example, my answer is yes for the lesion on the left because I'm clearly see, I'm clearly able to see reticular lines. Huh? Can you see them? Reticular lines, which are convincing, which are occupying more or less the entire lesion. So this is a solar lentigo, punto. I can do a cryo, I can do whatever I like. 
But for the lesion on the, on the right, when I ask myself, do I see clear cut benign features? My answer is mm, no, I'm not sure because the, uh, the border is not sharply demarcated because I don't see reticular lines, because I don't see fingerprints, I don't see uh, uh, white follicles and all the, uh, the other criteria for an, an eventual actinic keratosis. So here I have to say, hmm, let's stop and think for a moment. This could be a lentigo maligna. And this is what it was, a lentigo maligna, okay? So this is what happened in the last 20 years. Still, the criteria for early facial melanoma, the melanoma-specific criteria for the recognition of lentigo maligna is still valid. So rhomboidal structures, asymmetric follicles, um, or gray circles, and annular granular pattern. But before that, before that, just always ask yourself, do I see clear cut benign features? If no, then we have to stop and at least avoid making a cryo or making a laser or whatever, okay? And I want to finish with the progression model. We all have this slide, right, Emilio? <laughs> we all use it. <laughs> we, we probably have made, uh, let's say, updated versions of this. Slide. But uh, yeah, I have worked on this. I have my personal version of this. Yeah, personal version. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Willie, uh, uh, do you do you also feel, as I said before, that among your many important papers, maybe this is number one or among the among the most uh, the top ones yeah I, I, I yeah so first of all you are so very kind so i think you both made uh, and with other colleagues you made so many other very important papers so i think it was a, a quite a quite good paper but uh, there are many many good papers in dermoscopy the second point is as always this was a teamwork and I really want to stress the, the work of Roman Schiffner. He was a very energy, energetic uh, researcher at that time, and I was happy to have him because we made several papers with him also for digital follow-up. His wife made the statistics, and Almut Cognetta uh, from US, from Tallahassee, made the language, uh, the, and he also uh, coined this term annular granular pattern. So this was really a, a teamwork and I was very happy that at that time I had uh, these, uh, the, this good team and then we made this paper. So, and then I have to mention, and this is also important, at that time we didn't think on pigmentic actinic. Yeah. Because the, the pigmentic actinic we had not in our uh, in our view at that time, maybe, but they still must be there. But uh, then later we realized that the pigmentic actinic are really uh, a, a problem for differential diagnosis. And Emilius and, and Chappy, the, you made both this very important paper to discriminate the pigmentic akinic also from the lentigo maligna because they can very uh, can be very close together so you had also a great impact and i like the inverse approach very much also from both of you and you showed also in your papers that it's very easy to to teach and i include always this inverse approach to my teaching because as Jeppy said uh this is so important that you look also for the uh, for the for the benign criteria and not to biopsy too many uh, things. So, as always, it was uh, uh, it is important to change the idea to change uh, to 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 discuss the ideas and uh, to evaluate the differential diagnosis. And so uh, now we are a little bit more confident in this complicated realm of facial lesions but every day i have this uh, i have also the challenge so <laughs> in, in this really really where, where where is roman uh working now because i i i didn't see him for a long long time yeah roman roman decided then at, at some point to leave university and he is now in the top administration of the uh, german uh Physician Association. I see. Okay. She, she is. He is out of um, cur uh, curative uh, dermatology, but we uh, always mail and uh, yeah. But he 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 likes his uh, his life. 
but I would I have would have preferred that he stayed with me. <laughs> but such, <laughs> such is life. There, there is a question. Uh, can you summarize how to the, uh, distinguish pigmented decay from lendigo maligna? Um, yeah, maybe Emilio. You, you, yeah, Emilio is the, the, the person. The king of pigmentic. Yeah, the king of pigmentic activity. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, uh, I would say that if, if we focus only on these two differential diagnoses, then the most important difference is related to the follicles, which are known to be more dilated, larger in actinic keratosis and often filled with keratin plugs. So it's what we, we what we called WWF wide and white follicles, and also that scales are much more frequent in uh, in actinic keratosis. The point is that in the real clinical scenario, you never have two options. You always have three. I mean, because uh, in the real clinical scenario, nobody tells you that look, it's either a pigmented actinic or a lentigo maligna. Always you have in the game uh, all uh, probabilities, and sometimes maybe more than three. Uh, so that's why I feel that the interest approach is a nice way to go. Uh, at least it's, it's a guide that we can follow and we know that usually it will lead us to the, uh, to the correct conclusion. Another question is, is very important. Is confocal microscopy uh, helpful in, 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 in lentigo maligna? Definitely. This is, in my estimation, the best indication for confocal microscopy. Uh, because the, the, the skin is very thin and confocal is perfect for, for a very thin uh, skin, um, um, uh, especially when, when the pathology is located very superficial at the dermoepidermal junction. So very important. Yeah. Okay, I have, I have another question for uh, Willy and for you, Jeppy, which is somehow provocative. Uh, related, of course, to the, uh, to the uh, inverse approach and our ability to recognize melanoma early. Uh, I will show it to you via a, uh, via a couple of cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I guess that you can see my screen. Yes. So the point is that with the inverse approach, uh, uh, the, the inverse approach really works in the majority of the cases, both sides. So for uh, both to recognize benign tumors and malignant ones. The, and eventually uh, we are able to recognize small, small and type of malignance. Uh, for instance, this is an example of uh, a tough to recognize uh, lentigo maligna. There are also some melanophages here that complicate the, the situation. Well, let me tell you the let me tell you the point here because I thought about lichenoid keratosis. Whenever you have a differential between lichenoid keratosis and melanoma, you cannot avoid to make a biopsy. You cannot avoid; it's impossible. And by the way, there is a question concerning biopsy. What kind of biopsy you recommend, Vili? Uh, punch, shave biopsy. Uh, what what do you do in the practice? So I I uh, 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 I I recommend shave biopsy because normally in these lentigo maligna the changes are, are very superficial. You do not need a need to to see the deep uh, dermis, and if you see more of the superficial uh, epidermis then you have a better chance as a histopathologist to detect the proliferation of melanocytes. So the differential in histology is very easy. If you see melanocytes in nests at the junctional uh, at the junction, then the def there's a definite diagnosis of lentigo maligna. As there's maybe an exception in, in young adults or childs, but if the patient older than, let's say, 35, then the diagnosis of lentigo maligna is the correct diagnosis. And as uh, you, pay, uh, you published this with Iris, I guess, uh, also that there's not a diagnosis of junctional dysplastic nevus in, let's say, older uh, older people. There's only one exception, and this is very important. So you can have in lentigo maligna, uh, the, the, or the, it's, it looks like a lentigo maligna, but it has a desmoplastic uh, part. So the desmoplastic melanoma on the face are, if they are, uh, if from the major, or some of, or the 
the 50 percent of the of the desmoblastic melanoma are on the face and then the the surface of the face uh, of these lesions looks like lentigo maligna but you have a blue gray area in addition and then it's very important to have a a punch biopsy because otherwise you you could miss the the uh, the depth of the lesion and, yeah. and this is the only exception when yeah. i perform a, a punch biopsy or a spindle biopsy very good emilio sorry to interrupt please no no uh, no problem uh, there's also a question which is related to what i want to say so i would i will try to say it very uh, quickly so the point is that uh, uh, it works very well. For instance, you look at this lesion, it looks suspicious from a clinical point of view. You apply dermoscopy based on the inverse approach here. You have a, a clear solution that this is definitely a solar lentigo. So very good. Also, the next one, uh, twin case with the previous, again, suspicious clinically, but again, dermatoscopically, a clear cut network. So it's really helpful. Come on. And on the other side, you can diagnose tiny melanomas like this one if you apply the inverse approach because you don't see one of the six non-melanoma features. Therefore, you conclude that it could be a lentigo maligna, which is impressive, the fact that we can diagnose today lentigo malignas like this one or like this one, which is even smaller than one millimeter in diameter, but dermatoscopically, you don't see one of the six features. The question is, are we maybe overreacting with this? So could this be uh, an example of overdiagnosis? Do we really need to, uh, to recognize lentigo maligna at that stage? And uh, also, what would be the problem if we, uh, if we monitor a lesion like this, which is the question that arrived uh, in the Q&A? Uh, and then eventually see what we're going to do after a while. In fact, the question says um, that a large number of lentigo malignas have been present for many years, especially in the individuals. That's definitely true. Uh, are there any features that may indicate latency VS progression to invasion so that we can avoid invasive therapy? So, I mean, we could just monitor until something suspicious uh, appears, or at least we could apply a very conservative uh, treatment. Do we have any signs of, of invasive lentigo maligna? Uh, anything you, you you have in mind, Willie or JP? So, so I think that you you gave very good examples, and I always asking myself if you have a patient with eighty or seventy five, and you see a tiny lesion. Should we really do a biopsy and to bother this uh, this patient with the diagnosis of lentigo maligna? I, I completely agree with you. Yeah, I think you showed nice examples, and the first one that so is it's very important that on the face you can have also the other melanomas. You can have nodular melanomas, and you can have the classical superficial spreading melanoma. We already discussed this desmoplastic melanoma, which can have a surface looking like lentigo maligna. And the case you showed with these globules, with the very tiny lesion with the globules, I would say this would there I would definitely go for a biopsy because if you see globules, you, this is not so typical in lentigo maligna. Maybe this is a very early um, nodular melanoma. Mm -hmm. But if you see a brown spot, if so, with some yeah uh, follicular irregularities, yeah, that some, sometimes it's maybe prudent to wait a little bit and to make a follow-up. If the patient has other problems, yeah, yeah. then... Well, let's say a wise uh, approach is uh, this one that Emilio was mentioning in a couple of occasions previously, I remember very well, where the problem is not over-diagnosis, the problem is over-treatment. Yeah, that's true. Uh, 
That's the point. So once, I mean, we, we should not be scared to make an overdiagnosis. So a diagnosis, which is lentigo maligna, malignant, but a lentigo maligna of one millimeter will never kill a patient. Or it's extremely improbable that this lesion is killing the patient. So now we have to make the management of this lesion. And either the management is waiting, but I don't like to wait in, in, in some way because I, I, I don't already know that I have to do something more or less sooner or later. So why not uh, removing what is visible and then performing a little bit of a mic you know? So it's very simple. We don't have to do uh, big surgeries or whatever. Let's keep the, the treatment uh, a little bit more calm uh, no overtreatment, surgery of what is visible, and then in Mickey mode afterwards. And in my view, in the mo great majority of cases, everything will be solved. And of course, when you diagnose the lesion so small, then in fact, excising it is just five minutes. I mean, the discussion lasts more than the, than yeah. the excision itself. But there are scenarios in which the excision might be complicated. And in these scenarios, even... Uh, even monitoring could be an option sometimes in letigo maligna. But to the question, if we have any sign of microinvasion, the only answer that we could give is that, according to at least one study, it seems that when we have full obliteration of the of the follicle, so we when we have when we see blotches, sm either small blotches or larger blotches, then this probably corresponds to microinvasion. So it it would be a sign that makes us careful. Uh, another question is, uh, I really like the inverse approach, it makes sense, but what about the collision tumor? Very nice point, and that's why in the method we underline very much the concept of predominant presence of the feature. Predominant presence means that it's present all over the surface and not only in a part of the surface, because as you say, dear George, we might have a collision of a solar lendigo in one part, and the lentigo maligna in the other part. So that's why the feature needs to be predominant, prevalent, in order to consider this. Uh, another question is how predictive is gray color for lentigo maligna? Well, I would say it's frequent, but not specific. I, I guess you, you agree, my friends. And finally, no, not finally, we have several more. Uh, when the pathology report comes back as a junctional lentiginous melanocytic proliferation without ATPR, then, which is your approach? This is a question by Nisa. Yeah. Would you like to, to try to, to answer? So you biopsy and the result comes melanocytic proliferation, but no atypia. So I think uh, junctional melanocytic proliferation on the face in a gentleman older than 40 or 45 is a very early sign of lentigo maligna. And sometimes, you cannot, you cannot really tell for sure under the microscope whether there's a typia or not. So at least you have to monitor this uh, area very, very closely. Yes. So keep the treatment very calm, <laughs> but let's do a treatment. Yeah. Uh, Professor Stoltz, do you use Imiquimod? Do you use Imiquimod, Willie? Yeah, I use uh, Imiquimod, but uh, in Germany, this is off-label therapy, and I, uh, I made a, uh, uh, I talked to the patient very intensively, and they have to sign that it's not uh, standard therapy, and then I, I apply uh, Imiquimod. And sometimes if we are, if the margins are not so clear, and we would not, as we discussed it earlier, made a big, uh, larger excision, we use also in weekly mode. Uh, how long should we use in weekly mode after excision is another question. So if you mean when we start in weekly yes. mode, answer is immediately after the primary closure. Let's say immediately after removing the stitches. Yeah. Primary closure, after removing the, the stitches. And for how long? Well, when we use it in the adjuvant setting after uh, excision, then six weeks, but with a daily, uh, with, with a daily application. And uh, what else? Uh, and last question, do you recommend different surgical margins in case of lentigo maligna of the face as compared to lentigo maligna of non-facial skin? Repeat again, sorry, I, I didn't get it. So lentigo maligna on the face versus lentigo maligna on other, other anatomic sites. 
different uh, do we recommend different surgical margins i would say no so so we prefer to do it in a in a, a microscopically controlled fashion that uh, so most surgery uh, on the face and uh, and the dentigenous melanoma so the non facial melanoma uh, lentigo malignas uh, similar lesions so they are a little bit different there's a lentigenous melanoma they have i think also different biological uh, behavior so they are very very superficial and it's if you you have clear margins they are also okay beautiful wow good we covered a lot of uh, important questions, important questions. But remember what Billy was saying, uh, do not ever consider uh, the possibility of a, of, a, of a junctional nevus in a patient older than, let's say, 50 years. I mean, this is the case where we have to, uh, to make a treatment thinking about lending a maligna. And this is happening many, many times. Excellent. Very good. Okay. We, thank you so much. It was a great pleasure meeting you. I, I would prefer meeting you in person, but yeah. uh, this is uh, this is a good good yeah. way how to deal with this special situation. A good compromise. A chance that we will meet in person this month in uh, in the yeah. US. But yeah, let's yeah. See. <laughs> Hope, hoping it will work out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So really, thank you so much. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you were so kind. Right. So kind. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Allora, Emilio, I suppose that uh, we have also uh, um, other other things to do. Eh? Many. We are always running. We have a fight with the time always because yes, we have so always. Yeah. And although we want to finish the discussion earlier, it's not easy because yes. there are a lot of questions and very interesting points that are really uh, important to be discussed. So what's next? Next is eudermoscopy. eudermoscopy. Yes. yes. And for eudermoscopy, we have again a guest. But yes. this is not, in fact, a guest. This is, uh, I mean, part of the show. This will be part of the show. Uh, eudermoscopy will remain a, a part of the show. And Konstantinos and Christian, uh, who are in the eudermoscopy team, will join us one of them or both of them every week for very few minutes in order to show us something from uh, Eudermoscopy app. So I guess that we have Konstantinos with us tonight. So Emanuele, yes, we do. There we go. Konstantinos is here. Kostas, Kostas, ciao. Ciao, eccoci. Come stai? Tutto bene, tutto bene. I see that you, you miss New York, right? You miss New York. I do miss New York very, very much. <laughs> actually, this, this, this is a photograph by Asmar Group. I don't ah. know if so it's a, a buffalo here, ah. along with all the smog coming out on the foggy mountains, I think. You know, this is an amazing photographer. He is an amazing photographer of natural, natural scenes. Impressive. Yes, absolutely. Impressive. Constantinus, what do you have for us from the Udermoscopy?